Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching and thanks to our producer, Jeff DeRoll. When they're the offices of Mark Amberley, Biological Sciences Program Specialist in Albertson Hall, fourth floor on the campus of Fort Hayes State University. And you're seeing the newest edition of Kansas Fishes and a book that's uh, going to make a great Christmas gift to a lot of people who are interested in outdoors, conservation, nature, and of course, fishing. And uh, Mark Eberle joins us today. Fourth version, this one released July 7th with 518 pages, 184 in color. We'll talk more about the illustrations and 121 maps. Uh, let me uh, give you, before we start, Mark, a quote, if I might, from uh, Dr. Greg Farley, uh, Biological Sciences uh, Department Chair at Fort Hayes State University. An illustrated gem of a book runs over 500 pages, contains 184 full-color illustrations by Fort Hayes State grad and nationally recognized fish artist Joe Tomaleri said Dr. Greg Farley, chairman of Fort Hayes State's Biological Sciences. So Mark, how did it come together? Well, like a lot of things, kind of almost by accident. Um, one of my colleagues here, um, Dr. Bill Stark, and I were at the museum, Sternberg Museum, working on some fish collection stuff. And you just talk while you're working. And we realized, this was in 2010, that the most recent fish book for Kansas was now 15 years old. And so things had changed. We learned a lot of new information and, and we knew we needed to try and get that information to, to people that needed to know it, students, the public in general. And we kind of thought, well, you know, maybe it's time to do a new book. But when you do a book, it's such a large undertaking. And, and the amount of time you have to spend working on that kind of a project is kind of in addition to the courses we're teaching and those sorts of things. And so how do you find time to do something that ends up being this big? And so we thought, well, maybe we want to try and involve some other folks in this process. The Dr. Cross, uh, who had been the ichthyologist at the University of Kansas, had passed away in 2001. And so there wasn't really an heir apparent mm -hmm. to, to doing the fish book. And, and there are several people at Emporia and Pittsburgh and KU and K-State working on fishes. So we thought maybe we would need to try and do this in a different way. And instead of having that one or two author sort of book, maybe we need to make this more a collective effort and take advantage of all of our various levels of expertise on different parts of the fish. And so we brought it up at some meetings. Uh, we'd, when we get together, biologists have trouble getting together sometimes, but we get together at meetings and we'd have lunch and we'd talk to them and say, well, what about this idea? And so that went on actually for a couple of years. And it kind of slowly started coming together and we started believing this might actually work. Mm -hmm. It's such a different model. Um, when you involve more people, it gets more complicated very quickly. And, and so we decided to go ahead and, and try and draw up a proposal. And we went back to the University Press of Kansas that represents all the universities and asked them about the possibility of doing this. And they said that they would be willing to look at a, a proposal for that particular project. And so we, that, at that point, we started to make it a little more formal. And again, trying to make it this collective effort, we wanted to be as inclusive as possible. We, we contacted fisheries people at all of the state universities mm -hmm. and got someone on board from each of the state universities to, to contribute to the organizing committee functions. And then there are three agencies within the state that deal with fish in one fashion or another. So uh, of course, Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism is the obvious one. Uh, so we have a representative that was working for them in their research areas. Kansas Department of Health and Environment also monitors stream water quality and those things. So one of their fish people uh, came on board as a member of the committee. And then the Kansas Biological Survey, which is located in Lawrence on the campus at KU, but they do a lot of research also on fish and other aquatic sorts of systems. And so we kind of got representatives from each of these entities that would have some stake in all of this. And we added on, just for good measure, the artist, uh, Joe Tomaleri, so he could also contribute the artwork. And the one thing that kind of connected us all together, besides being at state agencies and universities, 
was that we all had had dealings with Dr. Cross when he was alive, because um, he had been here from 1951, retired in 91, but stayed active for those last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so we all had some, some very strong ties to him in, in our own work. And, and so Joe included in that. And so that was kind of one of the other things that bonded us all together as we put this together. And then from there, we, we ended up developing a formal proposal and going to the press with it and doing the negotiation. And you actually dedicate the book to Dr. Cross. Right. right. And so we have a dedication for him. We also have a biography of him that was written when he passed away in 2001. And so they allowed us to reprint that and include it in the book. So. Yeah, very prominent up front. This is really about him as much as it is about the fish. And this is where it started, isn't it? The right. Handbook of Fishes of Kansas by Frank uh, Cross. Right. Um, what year was this? So that was 1967, the first one. And then following that? And then he did a, a revision of that in 75, in 1975, and then the final one in 1995. And the other one that we're showing is Fishes in Kansas, second edition revised. This time joined by uh, Joseph Collins Correct. as well. Yeah, and these, of uh, course, uh, are they still in print? Are still uh, available? These these are now out of print, and that was one of the the driving forces too. Was the University Press of Kansas had taken over publishing, actually printing the book, mm -hmm. and they would run out, and we'd have to get more copies mm -hmm. to try and give to students in classes. And we're going, okay, we need something better than this, <laughs> and so we don't want to just photocopy books or something. And so we decided that was where we needed to come up with a new version. Well, Mark, how did the progression take place from the very first one by Frank Cross to the mm -hmm. current edition? Now, what kind of progression in addition to, of course, the illustrations? Well, the very first one, there was a lot that wasn't known. That was one of the, the first books to come out to do a state fauna. There were a few older ones that were more like pamphlets, mm -hmm. really, than books. And so this was one of the first ones that had what biologists use, what's called a dichotomous key that gives you a series of two choices to help you identify the, the organism you're looking at. And so he had one of those in there. And so a lot of the information in this one is really just based on his experiences from 1951 through the 60s and those of his, his students. He had mm -hmm. several PhD students working on fish projects in the state, all over the state. He traveled mm -hmm. all over. And, uh, and so that was kind of the, one of the very first ones to do that. And then after that, it was more just a revision, let's keep it updated kind of a process with those. They, they had artists do black and white illustrations for those. In the 95 book, they did a color inset in the center with some of uh, Joe's pictures, uh, similar to the ones we have in this book. And so it, it kind of just went through a now let's keep it updated kind of a version. Um, what, uh, what's included in the newest edition here? Well, there's a little bit of introductory information in here. That besides the biography of Dr. Cross and such, there's some information that highlights um, some of the basic fish anatomy and physiology that a student at a university or a high school might be interested in, for example. Uh, not fully comprehensive like a textbook, but some basic information. Uh, there's some information on the history of, of studying fishes in Kansas. Where did we first start to learn about them all the way up to the present time? Uh, and there's some information about the different kinds of streams that are in the state. They vary a lot from Ozarkian type streams in the southeastern corner to the ones we're used to out here, the more sandy plains kind of streams or whatnot. And so there's a, an explanation of the variety of stream systems that are there and some of the conservation issues that are different in those kinds of places. Um, and then there's some information that will help you identify the fish. And then you get to the really meat part of it, which is the species accounts, one for each species. But really appealing to a rather broad population. Right. And, and one of the things we did is uh, we went through this process. We, we didn't just write. It wasn't just the committee that ended up being authors. We had over 40 authors that had experience in Kansas or adjacent states. So working with the same fish don't tend to follow political boundaries as much as we do. And so somebody in Oklahoma working in the Arkansas River would know just as much as somebody in Kansas. And so we brought a lot of other people on that said, hey, I work with this fish. I can write a, a species account for you. Mm -hmm. And so we brought in these, all these other people, too, to write that. And, and one of the editorial processes we went through with the book was we want to make sure the accounts are all even. So if you're going from one author to the next on those accounts, it, it reads pretty smoothly. But we also wanted to make sure when you become... Any kind of academic, we sometimes lose the, the skill of talking to the public. 
we talk to each other, and, and we don't talk to the, to the layperson that doesn't know that particular subject, whether it's science or history or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And so we tried to make sure we watch for all those, to try and tone down the scientific jargon and eliminate as much as possible so that anybody that just really wanted to learn about the fish could read this information and get something out of it. And to keep them not terribly long either. So each one's about two pages. And part of that is the big picture of the fish and the map and such. But So there's not a lot of text there, but a lot of information within that text. So it can appeal to uh, people who like the outdoors, as I said, yeah. uh, people who are studying fish uh, as students mm -hmm. or uh, just people yeah. who uh, uh, fish. Right. And yeah, it's, it's meant to try and, and educate as broad an audience of people who might be interested. It's, it's not written just for the ichthyology class at a university. It's also expanding uh, across state boundaries, as you say, too. Colorado, right. Wyoming, uh, North South Dakota. And right. It, it, <clears throat> what we did, there aren't any uh, current fish books uh, for Nebraska, the Dakotas, mm -hmm. uh, Montana. A lot of those states have older fish books, some older than 95. And, and so what we wanted to do, too, was to make this book useful to a broader region of the plains. Uh, we added 28 species to the end in little smaller accounts with photos and stuff that goes along with that in which somebody in Nebraska could pick this book up, book up and identify whatever they're doing. In fact, I, we get fish samples from Nebraska. I have a student working for me, and if she doesn't know it, she uses this book to identify those Nebraska fish. Nebraska is working on a book. They're working on a book in the Dakotas. But until that time, this book will work there. And sometimes fish people like to look at more than one book. I'll key it in this book to try and identify it, and then I'll use the Missouri book maybe or something else just to double check and make sure it really is the right species. Now to one of the highlights, and that's the illustrations by uh, right. Joseph Tomillary, yeah. um, who was a roommate. In, yeah, we, when he's a Fort Hay State grad. In the, in the Talk old about days. that a little bit. Yeah, he was, he was a <laughs> botany student, actually. Uh, we were both, neither one of us is working on fish as grad students. Um, but we... Um, we started a little project and, and it kind of grew from there that he developed this skill of, of drawing these illustrations. So he wasn't an art major at all, um, but he had just a, an innate ability to do that. And, and there's been a progression. He's learned mm -hmm. new techniques as he's gone through the process. Um, but, but when he first began showing you those illustrations, it was a situation of, well, yeah, uh, let's <laughs> go to this and see if it's going to work or not. Yeah, so I mean, it, when you... Yeah, our, we all, biology people are like a lot of others. We tend to think we know more about areas beyond our expertise than we do. Including and, art. And yeah, art is one of those. And so when he first did his pictures and brought them to us so we could see them, uh, we were initially apprehensive that what if they aren't good? How do you tell someone that? Mm -hmm. um, but it was a pointless fear. It, it was a moot point because they were good. And, and they've improved considerably uh, over the years. I mean, you can see that progression when you look at his earliest artwork. And, uh, and so it's now become his full-time profession, just drawing mm -hmm. these illustrations for various private and public entities to use. Jeff will uh, be taking a picture out in the uh, uh, lobby here at uh, Albertson on the fourth floor yeah. of uh, his work. Yeah. Progressions, as you right. say, black and white to uh, to mm -hmm. the current situation. Right, and it's, yeah, it really it's, adds something to the book, though. Doesn't it, it? it does, and and it's one of the things we were able to do with this. Color has gotten much easier to do, and it's much less expensive than it used to be. Uh, when '95, when that book came out, they did the color inset um, because that was an easier way to do it. Every page wasn't color, and those black and white pages were cheaper to produce. Now, it's not quite the same, and so we could put the color illustration right on the page mm -hmm. with the description right underneath it and the map showing you, well, that's not even the part of the state I'm in or something. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of put all that together. You're not flipping pages mm -hmm. a lot, and so it, it does. It just it makes it a complete package. Mm -hmm. When you're looking up a fish, trying to learn something about it, you can see it, you can read about it, you can understand everything all at once. Now, these books are available now, and uh, they're available at Sternberg, Sternberg Museum, Museum of Natural Museum. History. Right. And uh, let's see, what's the cost of those? The suggested retail price from the press is $39.95. Uh, 
Um, but I think the Sternberg offers a 10% discount right. for their members to purchase mm -hmm. it there, which makes it about the same at Amazon, which would be probably one mm -hmm. of the, the least expensive places to buy it elsewhere if you want to do that. But Sternberg, of course. You can buy it locally. You can buy it locally. You can walk out with it. You've supported the Sternberg. You've supported the local economy as opposed to sending money all over. Another beauty of this, Mark, is that uh, the royalties from the sales of this book will go right back to scholarship funding. Right. And part of that, you know, how would you deal with royalties? And there won't be large, large royalties. Yeah. But, yeah they always tell me at the press, think fame, not fortune, when you do a book <laughs> for a press, university press. But it's... Um, one of the things we wanted to do too, there's a, there is a scholarship already established with the Kansas chapter of the American Fisheries Society. And it's named, Cross's, Dr. Cross's name is, is on that scholarship. And so we made the arrangements with the press that when those royalties are paid each year, that that money will just go directly to that scholarship fund. And so it's going back into this money pool that's going to be used to pay for Kansas students to study fish and, and add on to what we've, this won't be the end. Mm -hmm. Someday we'll have to do something, somebody will do something different. Uh -huh. And so we're, we're putting this money back toward training those young students. Kansas Fishes with uh, Mark Eberly, Biological Sciences Program Specialist at Fort Hayes State University. Our community connection. Thanks for watching.